Hi there. In this example, we're going to look at how you construct a statement of cash flows, or at least part of a statement of cash flows, using information from the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. The information that we're going to be using from here is from the example of Teresa's carpets and rugs, and the information you can find in the textbook on pages 241 through to 244. But all the information that we need to be able to do what we need to do uh, to create the statement of cash flows for the month of May is right here in front of us. So what we have on the left hand side is the statement of profit or loss with sales information that they had $100,000 in sales. Uh, they had various costs of sales. Um, so they had opening beginning, they had opening inventory. They had $50,000 worth of purchases. They had closing inventory. So the cost of goods sold was 55,000 gives you gross profit of 45,000. They had various expenses, marketing, lease payment, depreciation, interest, and lease amortization for a total of 6,751, gives you profit of 38,249. Turning to the statement of financial position, there's various information here for both months, for May and for April. So we have the beginning and ending of this particular period. So we're bookending the month of May. So we have April, 30th of April and 31st of May. We've got a pretty simple statement of financial position just with cash, accounts receivable, inventory. We've got two non-current assets with accumulated depreciation and amortization, so shop fittings and lease prepayment. We've only got one current liability, an account payable. We only have one non-current liability, a loan. We have contributed capital and retained earnings. In this particular example, because of uh, the nature of what has happened in May, we're only going to look at uh, the operating cash flows. And the reason we do this is if we look at the non-current liabilities and equity, nothing has really moved. The loan, non-current liabilities, has moved from 50 to 50, so it hasn't moved. So there is no additional without any other information. There's nothing happened with the loan. When we turn to contributed capital, it's gone from 20 to 20. Based on the information that we have to hand, nothing has happened. Um, yes, there could be an inflow and an equal outflow, but unless you're actually explicitly told that, then you just got to assume that nothing has happened. When we come up to the non-current assets, 20 and 20, 10 and 10. So again, whilst there is depreciation expense, this is a non-cash item, there has been no purchases or sales of shop fittings and no purchases or sales of lease prepayment. So non-current assets don't move. So that means the um, the investing cash flows, nothing going on, and the non-current liabilities and equity don't move, which means there's nothing going on with the financing cash flows. So this is going to be purely about the operating cash flows and the method in which we use to, to derive those. Um, and the way in which we do it is we look at the various items that would go into the operating cash flows. So the basic sort of things would be the money that you collect from customers. So I'll write this down here. So receipts from customers, payments to suppliers. Um, so in this case, we'll just sort of separate it out. So we'll include just inventory here. So just your inventory suppliers payments to empl uh, employees and others. Uh, we're gonna have an interest paid and tax paid. So these are the usual items which go into a uh, the operating section of a statement of cash flows. So to get this, we'll start with receipts from customers. So the information that we have, and I'll just highlight it all for the moment, the relevant information for this is that we made a hundred thousand dollars in sales but we don't necessarily it doesn't necessarily mean that we've collected a hundred thousand dollars we still may have people owing us money and alternatively we may have collected this month from people that owed us in the previous month so the way in which we do this is we take whatever is owed at the start of the month so we take the opening accounts receivable which in this case is zero we add sales to it and we take away closing accounts receivable. And what, we left, what we're left with is $80,000. So that means we had 100,000 available to collect. 
But because we've got $20,000 left in accounts receivable, it means that there's $20,000 worth that we have not yet collected. So we only actually collected $80,000 of what was available to be collected. When it comes to payments to suppliers for inventory, it's a really similar idea, except instead of looking at sales, we're looking at our inventory purchases. Not necessarily how much we sold, because we could have purchased that inventory sometime previously, and we could have paid for it at some different time altogether. What we're interested in is how much inventory did we purchase? So I'll just highlight, I'll highlight that here. I should do it in a different color. So inventory purchases, we purchased 50,000. Now again, we don't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean we've paid for that inventory purchase. And we come down to accounts payable. And what it indicates is at the start of the month, we owed our suppliers $35,000. And at the end of the month, we owed them $50,000. And that means we haven't actually paid them all the amount that we have for this month. So to start off with, if we take our opening accounts payable and we add in our purchases, we owe our suppliers $85,000. And at the end of the month, we still owe them 50. So we take off 50 and we have $35,000 that we have paid to our suppliers this month. And I'll make the whole thing negative because it is actually an amount which is leaving the business. When we turn to payments to employees and others, what we're looking at here is all the various things that we owe that we've paid for other to other parties. So we've dealt with all the inventory items. So even though we've just highlighted purchases, that's taken into account cost of goods sold and beginning and ending inventory, and we don't need to worry about gross profit. We don't need to worry about depreciation or amortization. Interest expense has its own line. So all that we're worried about here is, I want to use gray, that's a silly color to use. I use blue. Just the marketing payment and the lease payment. So those are the only two cash expenses which get included in this payments to employees and others. Now, we may not necessarily pay them or we may have prepaid some of this stuff. So we then turn to our current assets and our current liabilities to see, are there any current liabilities which we haven't already dealt with? Are there any current assets like prepayments that we haven't already dealt with? And it's only cash and inventory left and there's nothing here. So that means these two amounts have been fully paid this month. So we have paid $5,000 in cash uh, to whoever we paid for for our marketing services and we have actually paid a thousand dollars in a lease payment So that's a total of six thousand dollars Interest paid much the same deal When we look at it, I'm going to highlight it We look at interest and we check to see is there any kind of prepaid interest? Um, you know, we might have prepaid it and that does actually happen. You know, that can be done in, from case to case more likely though, you might have a current liability where you still owe uh, interest payments and we don't see any of that here. So that interest expense is also a cash flow. And looking around quickly, I don't know why this is the case, but obviously in this particular case here, there is no tax expense and there's nothing about tax here. So I'll put that down as zero. So total cash from operations, We'll just, we end up with 38,750. There's nothing else from investing in financing. So we have opening is 78,750. Change is a 38,750. Closing. is 78750 plus 38750 is 117500 and that is the amount that we see up here. 
And so again, the method for doing this is taking the profit and loss item that we're dealing with and then looking for the changes in the relevant accounts. For operating cash flows, you're looking for changes in current assets and current liabilities. So generally accounts receivable, accounts payable, maybe wages payable, interest payable, and so on. 